Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Recently, Pastor Benny Hinn conducted powerful miracle services at Family Christian Center in Munster, Indiana. Steve Muncy hosted this great event with the assistance of more than 60 local pastors. One of the highlights for the standing room only audience from the Chicagoland area and throughout the Midwest occurred during the first service as Pastor Benny introduced Prophet Brian Karn to minister. You have a very precious and I do want to emphasize precious gift. Viewers of This Is Your Day have become familiar with Brian Karn as his incredible prophetic anointing has been presented during recent programs. I see you receiving a major phone call. The last four digits are 9865. Huh? That's my phone call. That's your? My, my cell phone number. That's your cell phone number. When I just touched you, the Lord said, tell Look like I heard Janet. What's your name? Janet. Lift your hands. He said, just like I ordained Michael to fight, I want you to fight, Michael. What's your name? Michael. Lift your hands. I'm looking at this spirit, and this spirit has a whole bunch of wood in his hands. I see wood. I see wood. I, huh? That's my last name. Your last name is what? Wood. Lift your hands. Stay tuned because the prophetic word you're about to hear can radically revolutionize your life. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, my people are taking my name in vain. I said, your people? He said, yes. He said, you do it too. I say, yeah, they do it, but I don't do it, Lord. I'm super saved. I don't take your name in vain. He said, son, you and the church, they take my name in vain. I say, how? He said, what's my name? I said, Jesus. You know, Matthew 1, 21, say, but I shall call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. That's his saving name. He has a lot of names, but his saving name is Jesus. Acts 4 and 12 declares, neither is there salvation in any other, other than the name of Jesus. But he said, no. I said, okay. I said, well, how about Jehovah Jireh? He said, well, read your Bible. He said, I know you call me Jehovah Jireh, but if you listen, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, which means out of every situation is a revelation of who God is. But that's not his name. I said, well, what's your name? He said, well, all the things you call out are names that people gave me. He said, but only in one place in Exodus chapter 3 is when I gave myself a name. I said, okay. I say, what did you say your name was? He said, I told Moses to tell him, I am that I am. I said, okay, that sounds good. That's real good. That's real wonderful. All right, but how in the world are we taking your name in vain because your name I am? He said, tell my people... Every time you say, I am sick, you take my name in vain. Every time you say, I am broke, you take his name in vain. That's why he said, let the weak say, I am. Let the poor say, I am. Now you need to shout like increase is about to come to your... Come on, shout. All right, now, sit down, sit down, sit down. We almost there, we almost there. All right, you ready? All right, now say this now. You shall have whatever you. You shall have whatever you. You shall have whatever you. All right, you are speaking spirit. Remember that now. If you don't say it, you'll never see it. you got to change the way you talk. You have to change what comes out of your mouth. I don't care what it looks like. You never say what the enemy says. You say what God said. Isaiah 53 and 5 say, but he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. Now, 3 John 2 say, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your 
Now, I want you to catch this because the Spirit of God began to speak to me and he said, some things are going to get worse in America, but just because things get worse in the world doesn't mean it has to get worse for you. That while everybody is losing their mind, he's going to keep you in perfect peace. Isaiah 26 and 3. Because your mind is what? Stayed on him. Are y'all listening to me? Now I want you to hear me. Things are going to get worse. Now I'm, I'm going to give you this prophetic word. You may not receive this. Social security is not your source. The government is not your source. Your job is not your sword. Slap your neighbor and say, God is my source. You didn't say that right. Come on, tell them, God is my sword. So I'm telling you that things are going to get worse. Jobs are going to begin to fold. People that have been up in power are going to begin to come down. But there is a people that will not be affected by the world system. Because we don't live according to that system. We live according to the word of God. Which says in Philippians 4 that my God shall supply all my... Now say this with power, say more than enough. All right, I feel faith coming in the room now. Somebody in here, every debt you got, God's getting ready to pay it off. So I want you to say this with power. Come on, say more than enough. More than enough. Say too much. Too much. Overflow. Overflow. It's coming to my house. Now. When? Now. When? Now. When? Now. Call out your address so I know where to come to. your name so they know who to make the check out to now shout like you already got it now listen now listen my life changed one day when I obeyed a prophet. Hosea 12 and 13 declares, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Whenever God is getting ready to transition your life, he sends a prophet. I've heard it like this before. The difference of seasons, Brother Mike Murdoch says, the difference of seasons in your life is connected to a person. So whenever God, whenever God shifts a person's life, he connects them to the prophetic. Psalm 105, 17 says, he sent a man, even Joseph, whose feet they hurt with feathers. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. He received one word from God, and that one word changed his life. You don't you don't need nobody to talk to you for 2,000 hours. One word can change your life. I, 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 I told people this that a couple of months ago, maybe last year sometime, they were celebrating Apostle Hinton's birthday. And somebody got up and said, we want everybody to give $500. I said, me? You want everybody? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest. Can I be honest? Yeah. I didn't feel the spirit tell me to give it. Didn't nothing come on me to give it. And to be honest with you, I really gave it because I knew everybody was watching me. So I had to give it. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. But it's impossible to put a seed in the ground and not get back a harvest. So this is what I do. This is what I do. This is what I do. So I, I sold a $500 seed. I give it. And I leave out and I'm riding in the car. And I do this little thing that God told me to do. I heard it from this man. And I do it. And when I do it, it works. 
I talks to money because money can hear. Yeah. What? Money can hear? Yeah, money can hear. Ecclesiastes 10.19 say it answers. Yeah. If money answers, that means it can hear. And not only does money answer, look at somebody and say money talks. So I, I speak to money and I tell money, money, come to me now. Somebody say money. money. Cometh. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, that, that don't do it. That don't do it. That don't do it. Now you got to do it right. Say money. money. Cometh. Money. To me. Please. Now. So that's what I did, right? That's what I did. And I was, on, I was in Chicago, and I had a conference I needed to pay for. A week and a half later, I was in Louisiana, and a woman walked up to me in the service and said, Prophet Khan. I said, yeah. She said, do you mind if I give you right now $50,000 cash? I said, ma'am, you never have to ask me for permission. <laughs> never, never. I was in St. Louis, Missouri, walked up to a woman and prophesied to her and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have something to tell you. But God told me, this time is the only time he's ever told me this. I said, the Lord told me, I cannot tell you until you put a seed in my hand. She said, well, how much? I said, you want the truth? She said, yeah. I said, the Lord told me to tell you to give $10,000 to put in my hand right now. She said, well, I guess I ain't going to hear what the Lord got to say. <laughs> I said, I understand. I said, you know, you know God talks to me. She said, yeah. I said, trust me. She put the seed in my hand and I said, thus saith the Lord, the next six months will be the worst six months of your life. She said, I need my $10,000 back then. I said, but thus saith the Lord, in the seventh month, you're coming to $13.2 million. She gave the seed the fourth and the fifth month. It got so bad that she was living inside of a car, lost everything. Called Prophet Karn and said, hey, yeah. I said, what's up? She said, I need a cash advance on my miracle. <laughs> I said to her, if I give you the money, I interrupt your process. But let me encourage you. I said, let me give you this word. If the hell I told you you was gonna go through is coming to pass, the blessing got to be on the other side. Gets to the seventh month. Gets to the seventh month. Her daddy died. But her dad lived in another country. She was raised by her mother, and her mother never let her have a relationship with her father. Long story short, the daddy died, left her as the beneficiary of over about two or three hundred acres in another country. The government had been trying to get this land for some time, but the father would never sell it. They said, we want your land. She said, I'm not giving away all my land. They said, we don't want it all. We just want this portion. She said, make me an offer. They said, we're going to offer you $13.2 million. Everybody say, hey. hey. One more thing. I was in Fort Pierce, Florida. Walked up to a woman and said, thus saith the Lord. The Lord told me to tell you to give everything in your account right now except for $10. She said, he told you that. I said, yeah. She said, well, what I get? I said, he's going to make you a millionaire in seven days. I don't get them words all the time now, but when I get some, I get some. I said, he's going to make you a millionaire in seven days. I say, I, I say, before this week is out, you'll be a millionaire. So she takes the check, takes a long time to do it, but she finally writes it. <laughs> she come and lay it at the feet, and I give her the money, and I, I give her my number, and I say, call me when you get your money. Instead of her calling me when she got it, she called me every night to let me know she didn't have it. <laughs> that was on a Sunday night, Pastor. Monday night she called. She said, I ain't got it. Tuesday night she called. She said, I still ain't got it. She said, Wednesday night. She said, I don't have it. Thursday night, I'm nervous now. Because as a prophet, when you're in the spirit, you know God said it. But when you get in the flesh, you go to wondering. So Friday, she said, I still ain't got it. Saturday, I tell God, Lord, the banks close at 12, 1, 2 o'clock. Whatever you're going to do, you need to hurry up and do it now. 
She called me Saturday. She said, you is a false prophet. I said, I am. She said, yeah. I said, why? She said, I ain't got no money. She said, what to do? I said, um. <laughs> she said, I'm going to go get my last $10 at the bank. I said, God be with you. I got on my knees to pray, and if you're in here and you're an intercessor, there's something in prayer where a peace will come on you. I got on my knees to pray, and I couldn't pray. Just a peace came over me. She called me back 45 minutes later, screaming. I said, what you screaming for? She said, I went to get my last $10 out of the bank. I said, well, praise the Lord. She said, but you don't know what just happened. I said, I don't know. Tell me. She said, when I got back my bank statement, it said I have one million ten dollars She said, what to do? I said, get as much of it out as you can right now. Because ain't no guarantee it's going to be there tomorrow. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But I want to prophesy to you, God's about to give you divine increase. Money about to show up and you ain't going to know where it came from. If you believe it, jump on your feet and shout, it's on the way. You that have great debts, God's getting ready to pay that stuff out. I, and that's a word for you, Pastor Muncy. There's an anointing in here for debt cancellation. Now, now, see, I need to catch it. Stop trying to figure out how. That's where you miss it. You keep trying to figure out how. God, God made a raven come and feed Elijah. God is getting ready to make people bless you that don't even like you. He's getting ready to prepare a table in the presence of your enemies and you're going to eat some good food. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. Y'all ready? Come on, don't play with this now. Don't play with this. Because when you do this, angels are released to go get your... There it is. Money! coming to me shout like you already got it wait 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 not money come not money come come at we need a constant flow because there's some stuff we need to do for the kingdom come on there's some hospitals we need to build for the kingdom Come on, y'all, they say, there's some churches and places we need to build for the kingdom. It ain't never the will of God for us to have to struggle with increase. When you get home, I want you to read this. When you go to Joel chapter 2, read it when you get home. He said, your vats going to overflow at all. He said, I'm going to restore to you the years that the king weren't about. He said all of that, right? And watch this, watch this. After, now, all of that is prosperity. Then it says, and it shall come to pass after that I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You missed it. The prosperity came before the miracles. We messed up. We got the miracles, but we never got the money. But now we're going to get the money so we can do stuff all over the world. Come on. God, I don't, I, I, there it is. Come on. Hold your hand. I, hold Come on, look at your left and your right. Say, this is it. This is it. Come on, tell somebody, this is it. Come on, say, every debt I have is about to be paid off. Money coming to me. Shout about it. After those in attendance at this Benny Hinn miracle service at Family Christian Center in Munster, Indiana, enthusiastically responded to the opportunity Brian Karn presented to them, the prophetic anointing was displayed with power and accuracy. You, t you prophesied to us in uh, 2011 at Sweet Holy Spirit Church. Really? What I told you? You told us that we were going to get a house, and a week later we went looking and we got the house. And you said we were going to get another house, and we're living in that second house now. Wow. Well, I want to prophesy to you again. That you're going to move again. 
And the spirit of grace told me to tell you tonight when you get home. 15427. What is that? That's our address. Huh? That's our address. That's your address. When you get home tonight, heaven is going to meet you there. He told me that your life is in a major transition. And you become very frustrated with where you are. But from your mother's womb, look like I heard the Lord say, Sean, Sean, Sean. What's your name? Sean. Lift your hands. There's a lot of Sharons. Yeah, but there's only one Sharon Blakely. Come to me. I see in the realm of the spirit that the enemy plans for February the 18th to cause an attack to hit your body. I'm looking at a street called Hickory Court. Hickory, is that where you live? Okay. And I'm looking at the house number two. What's your address? Two Hickory Court. Lift your hands. And I see a plan of the enemy at that home to cause a sickness to hit you on the 18th of February. But because you came here tonight, the plan of the enemy has been disrupted. Whoa. Hey! Somebody screaming here like you got. Scream! Said, I said, scream. That was a powerful service there in Indiana. And I'm telling you, I, I can tell you from experience of me being there, the anointing was so strong. And God just had me to challenge the people to, to elevate their faith and to put them to a place they've never been before. I told you that I believe that my assignment to the body of Christ is twofold, to sanitize the prophetic and to get supernatural divine increase into our hands. Some of you don't believe it, that's fine, but I'm crazy. I believe that God could cause you to live like you've never lived before. I believe that when you minister under the anointing and when you give God your life, he said no good thing. I believe that Psalm 84, 11, will he withhold from you if you walk upright. Walk upright before him. Now under that anointing, God told me to challenge 70 people that, that was at that service. He told me to challenge 70 people. You know, Jesus had a big multitude, then he had 70, then he had the 12. But there's something about that 70, because he sent them out two by two. And they went around the world and ministered and witnessed, and God used them, especially to the Jerusalem. I want to tell you right now, while this anointing is flowing, and that same anointing that was there, I don't ever want you to look at something and say, oh, I wish I was there. You don't have to wish you were there. You're there right now. There's no distance in the spirit. That same anointing that was there in Indiana is the same anointing that is here right now. I ministered to that dear woman, and God removed sickness from hitting her home. Ministered to even Pastor Muncie about something that was going to come to pass, and I heard it happen the next day. I mean, testimony after testimony and miracle after miracle has come to pass. And I'm telling you, if I was you, if, if, if we were to switch seats and I was watching this program, I would be at the edge of my seat saying, Lord, tell me what must I do to tap into this favor? I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Right now, while that anointing is flowing, and while the presence of God is moving, I'm going to pray for you. Because seven is the number of completion. It's the number of it is so and it is done. It's the number of perfection. I'm going to pray for you. And then this is what I want you to do. Honor God. Are you ready? Father, thank you for that increase. Saints, I want to pray but I feel that anointing now. The Lord just told me to tell you what to do right now. A $70 seed. Call that number on the screen. And so a $70 seed. Every person, matter of fact, I, I said in that service it was 70 people, but I want to say there are 700 people who are watching me. I just got ready to pray, and the Lord said, you know, do it now. 70 people, 700 people, 
So that $70 seed. If the Lord is speaking to you, give $700. If somebody may want to give $7,000, it's your choice. But I know for sure, as the Lord told me that woman's name that you just watched, as the Lord gave me that woman's address, you just watched. As I ministered to that couple about the home they would get, you just watched. As sure as I know his voice speaking to me, that's how sure I am. That you need to sow that $70 seed. Your life is getting ready to change. I'm excited because I know I'm looking at a future millionaire. I'm looking at a future financier for the kingdom. Not money for you to get your hair done and drive nice cars and live in a big house. Nothing wrong with it, but that's not the purpose. That the gospel may be preached. That people may receive deliverance all over the world. That the poor might be clothed, that the hungry might be fed, the naked may be clothed, that people's lives will be changed because of the preaching of the gospel. If I was you, don't miss it. Dial that number on the screen because God is getting ready to blow your mind. I'm excited. I feel it in my spirit. Something good Something awesome is taking place in your life right now. Don't hesitate. Receive that anointing. Follow those instructions. It's yours now. God bless. Join Pastor Benny Hinn in Israel, November 12th through the 21st. You'll walk where Jesus walked, from Galilee to Jerusalem. Call today for information or go online to download a brochure. Experience Israel with Pastor Benny Hinn. You'll never be the same. I say, yeah, they do it, but I don't do it, Lord. I'm super saved. I don't take your name in vain. He said, son, you and the church, they take my name in vain. I say, how? He said, what's my name? I said, Jesus. You know, Matthew 1, 21 says, but I shall call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. That's his saving name. He has a lot of names, but his saving name is Jesus. Acts 4 and 12 declares, neither is there salvation in any other, other than the name of Jesus. But he said, no. I said, okay. I said, well, how about Jehovah Jireh? He said, well, read your Bible. He said, I know you call me Jehovah Jireh, but if you listen, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, which means out of every situation is a revelation of who God is. But that's not his name. I said, well, what's your name? He said, well, all the things you call out are names that people gave me. He said, but only in one place in Exodus chapter 3 is when I gave myself a name. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Recently, Pastor Benny Hinn conducted powerful miracle services at Family Christian Center in Munster, Indiana. Steve Muncy hosted this great event with the assistance of more than 60 local pastors. One of the highlights for the standing room only audience from the Chicagoland area and throughout the Midwest occurred during the first service as Pastor Benny introduced Prophet Brian Karn to minister. You have a very precious, and I do want to emphasize precious gift. Viewers of This Is Your Day have become familiar with Brian Karn as his incredible prophetic anointing has been presented during recent programs. I see you receiving a major phone call. The last four digits are 9865. Huh? I said, okay. I say, what did you say your name was? He said, I told Moses to tell him, I am that I am. I said, okay, that sounds good. That's real good. 
That's real wonderful. All right, but how in the world are we taking your name in vain because your name I am? He said, tell my people, every time you say I am sick, you take my name in vain. Every time you say I am broke, you take his name in vain. That's why he said, let the weak say I am. Let the poor say I am. Now you need to shout like increase is about to come to your... Come on, shout. All right, now, sit down, sit down, sit down. We almost there, we almost there. All right, you ready? All right, now say this now. You shall have whatever you. You shall have whatever you. You shall have whatever you. All right, you are speaking. That's my phone call. That's your. My, my cell phone number. That's your cell phone number. When I just touched you, the Lord said, tell, look like I heard Janet. What's your name? Janet. Lift your hands. He said, just like I ordained Michael to fight, I want you to fight, Michael. What's your name? Michael. Lift your hands. I'm looking at this spirit, and this spirit has a whole bunch of wood in his hands. I see wood. I see wood. I, huh? That's my last name. Your last name is what? Wood. Lift your hands. Stay tuned, because the prophetic word you're about to hear can radically revolutionize your life. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, my people are taking my name in vain. I said, your people? He said, yes. He said, you do it too. King Spirit, remember that now. If you don't say it, you'll never see it. You got to change the way you talk. You have to change what comes out of your mouth. I don't care what it looks like. You never say what the enemy says. You say what God said. Isaiah 53 and 5 say, but he was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquities. Now. Third John 2 say, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul. I want you to catch this because the Spirit of God began to speak to me and he said, Some things are going to get worse in America, but just because things get worse in the world doesn't mean it has to get worse for you. Yeah. That while everybody is losing their mind, he's going to keep you in perfect peace. Isaiah 26 and 3. Because your mind is what? Stayed on him. Are y'all listening to me? Now I want you to hear me. Things are going to get worse.